Okay, so let's play around with the transpose tool a little bit. Let's turn symmetry on. It's very important. Let's make sure this isn't the biped creature with the Z spheres. So I want this one technically, the skin. I was wondering why symmetry was still on. Because immediately when you produce the skin, the symmetry gets turned off. Okay, so this is how it works. If you hold control, oh, be in the move tool, hold control, click and drag, I get this mask, okay? And this mask can be sharpened. Okay, let's say I need it right about there. I can now move the arms a little bit. And the thing that you got to know here is shortcuts, okay? Think about what you have at your disposal right now. You have this big giant mesh, right? Well, what if I did an unwrap on him? What if from now on, instead of worrying about trying to get this perfect every time, I think ahead and I do a sharpen on it? And let's see if that rotates correctly. Well, I like that mask, so I can create an alpha for it, and this would be my arms. So anytime I need to mask off the arms rather than try to get and sharpen those, I can just say, oh, okay, well, I'm just going to load this mask up so I can go over here, choose the mask, and then go in here and say mask by alpha. So that's just a different way of thinking. Okay, so let's clear that. And I'm going to try to pull back some of these hands and then reposition the arm a little bit so here I'm just gonna grab the move tool and we're gonna move some polygons now there is that new move Let's see what happens here that's not bad Okay, good. Again, I like to keep the hands really big until I'm ready to deal with the hands. Uh, you can always scale them back. It's pretty freaking simple, but it's really hard to scale them out. <laughs> So, keeping them big, fat, and distorted is good at first until you get the technical size that you want, and then you can scale them back. Okay. Again, um, sharpen mask a little bit. If you don't get the mask perfect the first time, sometimes it's easier to sharpen it and then redo it once. And for some odd reason, that helps. So I'm going to say this is my hand, and I'm going to do uh, create alpha. I bet you wish you can do that at a party, right? <laughs> okay, 
good. Okay, now that we got the hand taken care of a little bit better, now, you know, I can base a lot of that stuff, like, uh, let's say I zoom out just a bit, and I can see that the hand is technically bigger than the head, but I haven't got a clue upon what I'm going to be doing here. This is just a base character. So, you know, I want to keep everything, like, very thin, very gaunt at this point. And the reason for that is you can produce a lot of characters based upon this one mesh. So, where's the inflate button? Inflate, 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 inflate. Inflate. Subtract equals deflate. So what I'm going to do is kind of deflate this a little bit. And I want to take this and make it into a... And I hold shift to re-bring that back out. You see that? Like this. So between inflate and move, I'm going to be developing this character to be not a character at all, but a very good blank for a character. Again, think of a wooden sculpting dummy. And if you do this once, well you should do it a couple times actually, but if you do it once, get a really nice base mesh going, you can develop some characters very quickly based upon the same base mesh. So in this lesson we're not going to be sculpting muscles or anything like that. That's that's later. This is more like your biped base mesh creation. Once I fix the torso part, I can decide on how long the arms are going to be. Because the first, the first arm mark goes right here. If you, if you take your elbows and press them up against your chest while you're standing up, you'll find that your elbows just reach your rib cage. So those are landmarks you kind of, well, at least I use. Whoa. <laughs> I guess that's one way to look at it. And the next landmark I kind of look at is the fact that, you know, if you, if you take your arms and technically uh, try to reach them as far down as you can, you'll reach about, you know, your, just past your hip. So not to get too technical with anatomy, but... Okay, and so far I am not too happy with the whole new move feature here. It's a uh, big, huge pain, but it's with everything, you'll get used to it. 
I know that. So if you if you're new to ZBrush four or you had ZBrush three point five or three point two, maybe you'll see that the move feature is just a little bit different. Okay, and let's see where's the inflate. So again, think about things skinny here because that gives you a lot of room to play around with. Because you can go from a gaunt character to a fat character pretty easy, but going to a fat character to a gaunt character is kind of hard. So for this initial base mesh, I try to keep everything really slender. tube guy and I'm just gonna go back out to the move tool move that butt back into place here fix his posture a little bit Sometimes you have to mask down. Like that. And then inverse it to get what you really need. Sometimes you have to do it twice too. So I think this lesson's all about using the transpose tool, <laughs> really. Uh, it's not really, it's a, tr a trick to get you to learn the transpose tool. So there we go. That's a good good start to a base mesh, no doubt about it. Just gonna try to put this here. Smooth them out as best I can. So now I'm just looking for any odd oddities like tweaked out polygons like this whole area right here is definitely I'm glad it's in the back there's no doubt about it I'm just glad that's in the back in the front it looks all smooth because I I repositioned that but you notice here this looks a little bit better than this So I got this whole open area right here with hardly any topology. So if I have any details in this area, they're going to be a little weaker than, let's say, areas here or areas here because there's a bigger gap. All right, good. I'm just nitpicking now. Now that we're done with this, go on to the next video.